Hi there, Alex here at mixinglessons.com. In this video, we're gonna look at bouncing your tracks. So what I mean when I say bouncing your tracks is going through the process of taking everything that's going on in your mix and creating a final file so that you have one stereo file of that song. Now, there are different reasons to bounce your tracks. Maybe the song is completely finished and you want to take that file and upload it to a digital distributor so that it can go to iTunes or Spotify or something like that. Or you might just be bouncing the mix because you're going to send it to a mastering engineer or maybe you're going to master it yourself. And so you need to get everything that's going on in the mix into one single file, which you can then import into a mastering session. Now, this process can be a little bit confusing because when you go to bounce your tracks, there's going to be all sorts of different options like sample rate and bit depth. And so we're going to go through some of those different options and we're going to look at which settings you should choose depending on what it is that you want to do with this bounced track. Now if you have a home studio or a project studio and you want to create better mixes in that studio then be sure to head over to mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads and get a copy of my free EQ cheat sheet, my free compression cheat sheet and my free vocal recording guide. I think you'll find all three really useful. Okay so when you go to bounce your song or export your song, render your song, whatever it's called in your door these are some of the options that you'll be given to choose from. Now it might not look exactly like this, depending on what software you're using, but broadly the options that you'll be given will be the same. So which ones should you be selecting? Well, first and foremost, let's assume that you're creating a file which is the final file for your song. So you've mixed the song, you've mastered it, and you're going to either upload it to a distributor to be sent off to digital download platforms or to streaming platforms, or you're maybe gonna have it pressed on CD. When you're creating that final file, there's something of a standard for these settings. We need a lossless file, so I would generally choose WAV. We need a stereo file. We need a bit depth of 16 bit and a sample rate of 44.1 kilohertz. Now, why do I refer to this as being the standard for the final file? Well, this is the format that files need to be in to be burned to CD. And obviously for a very long time, the most common way to release music was on CD. Now obviously we've moved more towards streaming and digital download in recent years, but this remains something of a standard in terms of what kind of file digital distributors will ask for to then take your songs and send them to streaming platforms and digital download platforms. Some digital distributors will give you the option to upload files at higher bit depths and higher sample rates. So they might accept a bit depth of 24 and a sample rate of 48. Personally, I don't think there's any benefit to doing that. And I also don't like to have to create different files for different things. So I wouldn't like to have to create a 44.1 16-bit file for CD and then a 24.48 version for digital download and streaming. I prefer to just create one file which is appropriate for all of the release formats. Of course, if the digital distributor that you're using says it has to be a different format, then obviously you can go and produce that final file in whatever format meets their requirements. But for the most part, digital distributors are still asking for a lossless stereo 16-bit 44.1k file, and that's also appropriate if you're going to be burning it to CD. Okay, now let's assume that this isn't the final file. You're not going to send it to a digital distributor or anything like that. Maybe you're bouncing your mix either to import into a mastering session or because you're going to send it away to a mastering engineer for mastering. Then how would we bounce this file? In that instance, I would recommend that you still want a stereo file. I would advise using whatever lossless file your session is currently set up as. And I would also recommend using the session's current sample rate and bit depth. So if you've been recording the session or you've mixed the session at 24-bit, 48K, I would keep those the same for the time being, and I would then lower to the 16-bit, 44.1K file after mastering when I was producing those final files. Now, you could use 32-bit float as your bit depth. 32-bit float isn't appropriate as a final file format for anything that's gonna to go to a digital distributor or anything like that, but it is appropriate if the file is going to be imported back into a DAW. And obviously, if you're bouncing this file for mastering, then it would be going back into a DAW. And you can use that as something of a failsafe in case there's any clipping in the track, because what that means is that the track can be turned back down in the mastering session and still be used. Whereas any clipping that occurs in a track, if you've bounced it to a fixed point bit depth, either 16 or 24, would mean that that clipping is baked into the file. Having said that, as long as you're mixing properly and you're being intentional about your levels, there's no reason that there should be any clipping in your track. And so generally I will just use the original bit depth, but you could use 32-bit floating point if that would give you a bit of extra peace of mind. 
Now, briefly, something else that we need to keep in mind is dither. So sometimes you'll be given the option to apply dither in the bounce window or the export window in your DAW. If not, you'll need to add it as a plugin in your session. Now, dither is a means of intentionally adding some very low level noise into our session, which is used to resolve any distortion that can come about as a result of lowering the bit depth. And so there are different schools of thought on this. Most people will say you should only add dither when you lower the bit depth. So let's say we'd been working at 24 bit and we were gonna bounce a 16 bit file, then you would need to apply dither. Now my process for this is that I apply dither whenever I bounce to a fixed point bit depth, so 16 or 24. So even if the session that I've been working at is 24 bit and I'm bouncing to 24 bit, I will still apply dither. Now the reason for that is that the internal processing that goes on in all modern doors is processing your audio at 32 bit float. So to my mind, even if we've got a 24 bit session and we're bouncing to 24 bit, the audio in that session was being processed at 32 bit floating point. So we're still coming down from 32 bit float to 24 bit when we bounce to 24 bit. So my rule of thumb with dither is that I add it to my session before I bounce whenever I bounce to a fixed point bit depth. If you're bouncing to 32 bit float, you don't need the dither. If you're bouncing to a fixed point bit depth of 16 or 24, then you do need the dither. Lastly, you might have the option to use either offline or online bouncing. Online bouncing means that it happens in real time. So your song will play through as it bounces. And that gives you one last opportunity to listen to that song through and make sure that nothing is incorrect. There's nothing that you need to rectify. A track hasn't been left muted, for example. Whereas offline bouncing doesn't happen in real time, so it's a lot quicker, but you don't get to listen to the song one last time as it bounces. I hope you found this information useful. Don't forget to pick up a copy of my free Q cheat sheet, my free compression cheat sheet, and my free vocal recording guide at mixinglessons.com slash free dash downloads. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.